So it's great to see you all. Yeah, hey, Nora. So Nora, where are you writing from? Okay, Derek, hey, Derek. Okay, Anita, so many people, great names. Okay, hello, hello. Yeah, nice to see you too. That's great, Silvia from Sao Paulo. Great, welcome. Okay, great, Mr. Smith. Claudia, Ellen, that's great. So welcome everybody. Um, we're gonna have our session today being sponsored by Cambridge By Your Side. So By Your Side is um, an exclusive system that Cambridge has for private teachers. If you would like to learn more about By Your Side, you can click at the top of the, the, the screen. There is Cambridge By Your Side, click here. There is a YouTube link over there with about 30 minute presentation about the whole system. You can watch it after this presentation. Please don't watch it now. Look at me, stay, stay with me, please stay here, but you can watch it after the presentation. Great. Oh, Virginia from Sao Paulo, many people. Wow, I feel flattered. So can we get started? Yeah, so here we are. Um, our topic today is to talk about professional development for private teachers exclusively, but not only. Yeah, um, even if you're not a private teacher, you can take advantage and uh, profit from the, the clues and the talk we're gonna have here. And we're gonna cover four different areas. Yeah, first we're gonna talk about language development and language maintenance. We're gonna move on to teaching performance, talk, about a little, uh, talk a little about teaching and update. And then course management, how to manage your courses. And finally, how to manage your students for different sections. Starting with the first section. <clears throat> Here we go. Okay. So there are three questions on the screen. Um, let's have some time to think about it. I like to have my participants think and then contribute. So let's start with thinking. There are three questions over there. Read the three questions to yourself and think about an answer to each one. If you have a clear answer, that's okay. If you don't have a clear answer, it's okay too. So let's think about the three ones. All right. So there we go. First one, contamination process. What do you think that is? Can anybody give me some uh, information, some contribution? If you have an idea, write it down in the chat. Let's see how perfect your answer is. Okay. Oh, influence of L1. Thank you, Cindy. That's that's great. That's that's exactly. Oh, okay, Rose. That's true. Great. So this is it. Um, I'm going to start talking about contamination process by talking to you. So think a little if you are not a native speaker of English, or even if you are a native speaker of English, think how many hours a day per day, every single day, do you actually listen attentively to native speakers language, to native speakers English, yeah, or native speaking English, original English. So if you think about it, some people will say 15 minutes per day or one hour per day for those people who like to watch uh, TV shows, or maybe two hours per day. This is usually the answers that I get when I'm involved in teacher training. And then the second question is, how many hours a day, every day, do you listen to your students' English? And then the answers are usually different. Can, can you write me some, uh, can you write some numbers in the chat? Um, how many hours a day, every day, do you listen to students' English? Let me see the numbers. Seven hours, Cindy. Wow, eight, wow, 10 hours, Bianca, that's a lot, yes. <clears throat> So as you, as you can see, we listen to our students' English many more hours, much more time than we actually listen to original English, natural English. For the brain, this works phenomenally well or terribly 
if you depending on how you look at it, because it will start absorbing what it hears the most, what it listens to the most. So even if you are a native speaker of English, the tendency is to start absorbing your students' English. That's the nature of life. The more we get contact with the language, the more we absorb that thing we have contact with. So in order to avoid this contamination process, we need to keep studying. It's very, very important that we study consciously, uh, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, everything, so that the brain has a basis to defend itself against contamination. And the verb is really that, to defend itself against contamination. So with that in mind, we can move on to the next question, which is how do you keep track of your English? How do you know that your English keeps being good day after day? Can you give me some suggestions? You can write it in the chat. Yeah, if you, if you have a certain technique, something that you do. Oh, lifelong learning, that's it, Anita. That's it, we have to keep studying forever. Yeah. Ah, Marina is true, updating. That's very good. Oh, great, Livia, listening to podcasts. That's great. Okay. Oh, going to college. Oh, this is good. Formal. Okay. And Teresa mentions proficiency exams. That's great. So um, here is one option. There are two sites over there. One of them is called Test Your English, both of them by Cambridge. And the other one is exams. The one on exams is the one um, I forgot. Teresa Mello mentioned proficiency exams. Yeah. So if you go to the first site, um, Cambridge or Test Your English, you will see a very good and reliable teaching, um, sorry, um, placement test. So you are able to get in there and you're able to answer the questions and then you're going to get your answers. So the trick of that placement test is to try it every six months or every year, just to make sure that your level keeps at the same, yeah, keeps the same uh, throughout the time. If there are differences, if you start going up, you got a certain level, and then when you try it again, you got a better level, so much the better. But if you start going down, if you start forgetting things or falling, falling into the tricky questions, into the, the trap of the tricky questions, then it's a good idea to go back to study. Yeah, to studying very hard. Um, the other one, uh, Cambridge Org exams and tests, is about proficiency exams. You can try any one of them. Let me see if I can share it with you. Just a second. We're going to share it right now. Okay, so this is this is test your English, if you can see it. Yeah, this is the site about testing your English, and this is the site about proficiency exams. Yeah, I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but this is it. Okay, so going back. With the first one, Pastor English, it's a general placement test. The other site is precious. Cambridge is good enough to give us to give us some um, information on exams, and they give us the whole paper. They have a past paper over there. You are able to download everything, download the, the, the reading paper, the listening paper, the speaking, the writing, even the answer keys, and you're able to try the test yourself and see how much uh, you perform yeah, and check against the answers and check. So these are good ways to keep track of your English level. So moving on, um, how can you measure your continuous language development? How do you know that you're getting better along the way? Uh, somebody, I think it was Anita, Anita mentioned lifelong learning. So what are the things we do in order to measure at our, our development? You can use the same ones, as I said, Every six months, you can try it again, or every year, you can try it again, and you see if the results change. <clears throat> um, you can also try dictionaries, yeah, Cambridge Dictionary, for example. 
Um, I don't know if you are aware, if you go into Cambridge Dictionary, you are able to go to an area called games and puzzles and quizzes, if I'm not mistaken. In that area, there are several uh, quizzes on vocabulary, idioms, grammar that you can use with your students and you can use with yourself as well. You are able to select the level. Yeah, from... Um, I'm sorry, I'm getting some interference. I think my neighbor decided to destroy his apartment, but I, I hope it's not getting to you. Let's hope the, the microphone is filtering. But bear with me, please. Um, so this is it. You are able to get in there. Um, I really recommend Cambridge Dictionary if you are able to, to get in. There is a little section to the left with login. If you register, it's for free. You have access to many, many good features inside the dictionary, and they are all reliable. Um, there are some teachers, some private teachers, who have told me that they simply, if they need a specific grammar exercise, for example, for their students, they simply Google present perfect exercises and they select. Uh, it's a good option. It's a good tool. However, we need to remember that the internet is a repository. What does that mean? It has several options and many different types of exercises, but we, are, we cannot guarantee they are actually good and we cannot guarantee they are actually accurate because we don't know who created that exercise. Sometimes there are spelling problems, sometimes there are grammar problems inside the grammar exercise because we don't know who created it. Somebody uploaded it and it's in the internet. If you try it inside Cambridge Dictionary, it's much more reliable. So the, the, the tasks there, the grammar quizzes or the vocabulary quizzes there are much more reliable because they were designed by Cambridge professionals. So that's, that's the difference. Yeah. Okay, any questions over here you would like to ask? Mm -hmm. Hi, Roberta. Okay, so let's move on. So far, so good. Thank you, Marines. Okay, so there we go. Great. The second part is teaching performance and teaching update. Before we start that, so let's remember and agree, everybody together, that it's important to continue studying yeah, forever. Never stop studying the language, even if you are a native speaker of English. If you are a native speaker of English, I really recommend getting a grammar book because you will have the chance to understand the terminology. Terminology is a mystery to you. You talk because you're a native speaker, but the terminology is kind of weird. So the grammar book will help you with the terminology and, and also it will give you some insights on the kind of problems your students may find when they're trying the tasks. If you are not a native speaker of English, then it's a must. I have several books behind me and several grammar books. I keep studying. And uh, I study online as well. I go into Cambridge uh, Dictionary and I get some grammar exercises or other sources. It's very important to keep studying. So now let's talk about teaching. That part was the tool we use to teach. Now let's talk about how we teach the tools we use as a teacher. There are uh, three questions again. So once more, one minute to read through the questions and think about them. Just consider the answers. We will share the answers in a minute. So one minute to read. Let's take a look at question number one. So current information technology level, all that information technology can do for us today. How has that changed our students? Are our students still the same? Like 10 years ago, were our students thinking exactly the way they think or did they think exactly the way they think right now? What is different about the learning process? Who can tell me some answers? 
Marina says it's completely different. I totally agree, Marina. In what ways? Can you give me an example? Okay, very nice. That's that's very important, Bianca. That's that's very true. Okay, great. So first of all, we're going to address Bianca's comment in a minute. But right now, let's talk about uh, learning. How learning has changed with all this technology, information technology uh, uh, advance and uh, uh, development. In the past, and, and uh, it can also be reflected in the teaching methodologies of the past, students came into the classroom, either a virtual classroom or a real classroom or one-to-one, -to, -one, to receive knowledge. So they didn't have knowledge of the language, they wanted to receive knowledge of the language. In my time, for example, if, my, if I wanted to give my students a song, I would have to choose the song on the radio. Yeah, either, either I had to buy the, the album or to buy the cassette tape and then listen to it many times and try to write it down. And then Murphy's Law, there was always one or two words I couldn't understand. And then all my job was down the drain. I couldn't use the song because I couldn't understand those two words. It was always like that. Murphy's Law was a nightmare. Um, I'm, I'm sure none of you has been through that because you're much younger than I am. But if you talk to your teachers, they will tell you how terrible that was. Yeah. So nowadays, it's there. You just click and you have it. You have the song, you have the words, you have exercises that are ready. The same thing happens to your students. In the past, they had no access at all. In the past, schools would offer the Friday so that the student would go back to school on Friday and watch a movie in English with English subtitles. That was fascinating. That was that was part of the sales pitch. Oh my God, I can go to the school and watch a movie in English with English subtitles. How ridiculous is that today? Yeah, we can do it at home. We don't even need to be enrolled in a school in order to do that. So, so I know it's funny. I know for people who are young, this is a crazy idea, but the past was dark, believe me. We are in much better times. Yeah, so um, this is it. So students don't go into school for knowledge of the unknown anymore. They have it in their hands. So they have knowledge when they turn on the radio, but they also have knowledge when they turn on the TV, the computer, the cell phone, knowledge input comes to them 24 hours a day. They just need to allow contact and this is it. So what do they come to school for? They come to school in order to learn how to articulate that knowledge, how to manipulate that knowledge, how to make it fluent. So that's why methodologies started teaching, and that's why our teaching needs to adjust to that as well. We have to stop being uh, uh, knowledge information deliverers, and we start being managers. We have to manage their articulation power. We have to manage their, their uh, manipulation power, language manipulation power. So that reflects in the way we teach. Okay. And it also leads us into our next uh, question. What have you been doing in order to adjust to that new area? Yeah. How have you changed your teaching? What is something that you used to do and you don't do anymore? Or something that you, did, uh, that you didn't do and now you do in order to adjust to that situation? Uh, greetings, Manuel. Okay. Can you, can you, ah. Oh yes, Netflix, Bianca, true. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Perfect. Delegate much more. This is great. This is great. Get the students to talk. This is really, really good. Yeah. Anything else? Okay. Gamification to draw their attention, to keep them engaged. Okay. Using more links. True. True. Very nice. Very good answers. You, you must be great teachers. Great teachers. So um, with gamification, I'm going to go back to what Bianca had mentioned. So students come into the classroom with a lot of anxiety and hurry. Yeah, they think they need English is there. So they have this, this uh, power pressure on top of them with input, but they don't know what to do with it. 
so they want a quick solution. Yeah, I was telling a friend the other day that I should start selling pills. Like, take this pill and you're going to be fluent in English. Because this is what people are looking for. It's amazing. It's not going to work, obviously. This is not how languages are learned. But, but apparently, they're not aware of that. So they, they want something quick. So it's also part of our job as a teacher to make the student feel comfortable enough in the lesson and to understand that language, is, language learning is a continuum. Yeah? And slowly and steadily, they're going to get there. Yeah? So the more they try, the better they get at it. Yeah? OK. Ah, Lucimara, online techniques to enhance learning. That's great, Lucimara. I agree with you. OK. Um, next one, which is the last one. Uh, since we're talking about internet, I don't know if you are aware, there is this link, cambridge1.org. Yeah, let me try to share it. Let me see if I can succeed. Okay. Yeah, so this is Cambridge. Uh, one, yeah, I don't know if you can see it or not. Mine, mine is already open. But if you go to cambridge1.org, yeah, you are able to register. You can also you can also register for free. You don't have to pay that, and it has a lot of information, a lot of good information uh, um, about teaching techniques. There are uh, some videos are free, some videos are open, and some videos are very good courses that you can pay a little mm -hmm. and you can have access to. So whenever you are teaching and you notice that you miss something and you need to polish your skills, it's a good idea to get there in cambridge1.org and, mm -hmm. and browse through the courses there. You might find something that is exactly what you're looking for. Yeah, oh, definitely, mm -hmm. Marina, I agree with you. Okay, any other questions about teaching performance and update? No? Okie dokie. So, how do you keep up with new trends? Exactly the same way. If you go there, cambridge1.org, there are many, many new teaching systems. They have a series of small courses, two hour courses like workshops about new trends and new techniques. And as a, this, is, this is actually the only problem I see with private teaching, as, as part of my working life is also private teaching. And sometimes when I think about it, if my life were exclusively private teaching, I would miss that. So the advantage of belonging to a school is that you have contact with the other teachers daily and, and the, and the school usually offers in-service programs or they offer uh, ideas and, and uh, by working on different schools, you end up enlarging your, your teaching capability, your, your teaching tools. And then when we are a private teacher, slowly and steadily, we start getting behind because what we have learned once yeah, is not necessarily what still is state of the art teaching skills. So, so as a private teacher, I miss that. So one good way is to keep track of Cambridge One, take a look at the courses, see if there is any course talking about something that is unfamiliar to you, get in, uh, um, watch it, learn from it. It's a good idea. Our conference, Cindy, thank you very much. This going to conferences, that's precious, precious. Going if either online conferences or face-to-face or -face mm -hmm. conferences, they're all very necessary. This year, this year there's going to be a very big conference in Goiânia. So if anybody is close to Goiânia, that's a great idea. In July, the Rusty So International Conference. But there are smaller conferences in many cities and towns in Brazil. It's important to go there and to keep keep up. Networking is always good. Uh, still on conferences. Um, we need to stop and, and uh, be fair a little. Once a teacher told me, uh, I've been a teacher trainer for ages, so I have a lot of contact with teachers you know, being trained and uh, uh, in service or novice teachers or experienced teachers. And once the teacher told me that she was not very comfortable with the uh, big conferences because she would 
choose certain presentations. And at the end of the presentation, she had the feeling that she had learned nothing new. There was nothing new there. And then I told her what I'm going to share with you right now. If you go into a conference, if you watch a presentation, and at the end of it, you have the sensation you haven't learned anything, that's fantastic because that is uh, a evidence that is proof that you are updated. Your teaching is good and your teaching is current. If you go to a presentation and some things are new to you, you have the chance to catch up and adjust that to your great teaching. If you go to a conference and everything is like a blur, you don't understand what's going on, then we have to get seriously worried about it. Yeah. So, so remember that whenever you watch a video, a conference, a presentation or, or a program and everything seems very comfortable and, and current and nothing new to you, it's a good sign. Yeah, you have, you have just found evidence that your teaching is updated and good. So never, never feel afraid to feel like that. But I'm gonna be, yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I always find something interest, interesting in every presentation that I attend. Yeah. So it's, uh, I think there is a proverb in English, right? Don't throw the baby with the bath water. So always look for the baby when you are observing uh, some kind of presentation. Yes, Lucimara, I agree with you. Okay, and uh, so let's move on. Before we go into course management, is there anything you would like to ask about your teaching performance? Yes, yes, Victoria. The name of the conference that I mentioned is the Brass Tea Soul International Conference. It's going to be um, in Goiânia in July. I don't remember the dates right now. But it's easy. If you Google Braz Tesol, it's B-R-A-Z hyphen T-E-S-O-L, you're going to get into the site. Oh, thank you, Cindy. That's it. Yeah. But that's not the only one. You don't have to wait until July. I'm sure that you can find many other conferences uh, throughout uh, Brazil, smaller conferences, but with good, good ideas as well. And uh, thank you, Derek and uh, online as well. You can find many conferences online, many presentations online that are really, really good to you. Okay, any other questions? Okie dokie. So there we go, let's move on. Oops, sorry. And talk about course management. So now it's more focused, not only teaching in general, but focused to your lessons, how you manage your lessons. This time we have five questions, but it's still one minute. So read them silently, reflect about the answers, see if you have a clear answer to all of the five. All right, great, so let's talk about them. How do you check your student's English level? Please give me some answers. What do you do, when you, especially when you have a new student and you want to place the student? How do you do it? Help me out. Okay, Sandra. Oh, Sandra, nice to see you. Okay, okay, Marina, Maura, oh, great, great. Cambridge test and interview. Perfect. Oh, you're good. Oh, I'm talking to good students, to good teachers here. Yeah. Okay. Great. Fantastic. That's it. This is it. Needs analysis. Great, Renata. That's that's very important. Okay, great. So um, um, as a clue, one of the options we have is the one we have already mentioned, the test your English. Uh, it's usually very accurate. Yeah. And um, the funny thing is, 
it's accurate and disappointing. Not disappointing to the teacher, disappointing to the student. Because students, because of that sensation we have already discussed, the enormous quantity of information input uh, people usually get nowadays, when they come to you, they come to you with a false sense of self-level. So they come to you and they say, I am advanced. And you say, really? Oh, that's fantastic. Try this link. And then they try the link and the link tells them they are B1 and they get very disappointed. Sometimes they get mad. They get mad. They say, oh, the test is wrong. This is wrong. Yeah, once I'm going to tell you something that I found very funny. I, I hope to share my sense of humor. Once a, a prospective student came to me and I told, he said that he was advanced and I told him to to get to, to try Cambridge test, placement test, he did. And the result was B1 slash B2. He was borderline between B1 and B2 and he was furious. And then he told me, Elsio, that test is wrong. That, that the result is wrong. I am advanced. I only got B1 slash B2 because the test is very difficult. Otherwise I would be advanced. Yeah, so I said, okay. <laughs> so okay, it, the test is not difficult. It's a placement test. <laughs> the objective is to find your level. Yeah. So, so unfortunately, we need to see that as private teachers, people come to us with this false sense of level, and we need to be very caring, very very calm and elegant, and help them see that even though they have a lot of exposure, manipulating language is what counts. Yeah. So they have to learn that. So uh, it's very important to give them a placement test. Um, there is also, I think Marina had mentioned needs analysis. It's always good to talk to the student and to notice their needs. Okay, great. And then moving on. Okay, course book. So how many people use course book? If you use a course book with your private uh, students, just write yes in the chat. Let's see how many people. We write yes. Oh, great. Wow, that's fantastic. That's really good. Yeah. Okay. Some of my students drew. That's okay. Great. So, what's the advantage of using a course book? Can you give me some advantages? Oh, I like Touchstone. Yeah. Okay. How oh, that's true. Saves time. Okay. Okay, there's extra material the student can review. Continuity, the sense of continuity is great. Helps with the planning. That's very true, very true. Yes, vocabulary is already prepared for you. The selection is there. It's great. So there are so many advantages. Yeah, this is good. And then the next question, how do you select a book for each private student? Do you have your book that you teach everyone? Do you select one book for each student specifically? Or do you have some books for certain profiles? How do you deal with it? Let me know, please. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Okay. Okay, interesting. Okay, you get a book and, and you use it. Okay. Great, very nice. So whatever your style is, it's always important to keep refreshing the idea. Yeah. Um, some books are very good, but they belong to a certain time. And then some five years later, they start missing something like the topics are not so current anymore. Sometimes they create a new edition, sometimes they, they don't. So it's, it's a good idea to keep uh, um, an eye for different books in the market and things that you can adapt. I like the idea, uh, um, some people are very specific, some private teachers are very specific. They select one book per student and two students will share the same book only when their, their profiles are extremely similar. Uh, this is crazy because the teacher needs to have a personal library with all those books, but it's fantastic because you're going straight to the student's needs, it's great. Some other teachers like to, to be professional on one book, and then he adjusts the books to all their students. 
and and some teachers have profiles as you said here so they are all good whatever kind of teacher you are it's a good idea to keep an eye on for uh, new books because uh, um, I'm not talking about the quality. Once the book is good, the book will always be good, but I'm talking about topics. Sometimes the topics get old and the students don't identify with the topics in the book in, in, anymore. And by topics, I mean the conversation topics, what the, the books are addressing in each unit. Yeah. Okay, great. If you want a suggestion, da -da -da, again, Cambridge One. In Cambridge One, there is a section, once you register, there is a section called My Library. In that section, you are able to visualize lots of course books, lots of grammar books, vocabulary books. There is a series of options. And then you can always browse through it, see if there's something new, test it, get a page, take a look at it. Maybe there will be something there that it's exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, what is the difference between Cambridge One and just Googling new English books? When you Google, you don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, sometimes it's too much information. Sometimes it's not enough. Google is a mystery to me. Sometimes the books are not exactly what I'm looking for. If you look at Cambridge One, you're going to have a very specific selection selected by topic, uh, course book, grammar, vocab. And each book will have a different code to show the level if it's if it's A1 or A2 or C1 or B2. So it's it's very uh, it's much more teacher friendly. Let's call it like that. So that that's why I like it. Yes, Maria Neves, that's it. That's it. Okay. So moving on to number four. So is there a difference in lesson management depending on the course book? That question means, do you always teach exactly in the same way, whatever the course book, or do you change the lesson sequence? Do you change the lesson dynamics from one book to another? Can you give me your mind, please? Can you tell me what you do? So do you, do you change your teaching style? Do you notice that you change your, okay, now? Oh, 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 that's digging further is great. Okay, who's maybe? Yes, very nice. Yeah, so sometimes we get a new book and the book is kind of weird because it's, it's not that it doesn't feel good. It's that you are so used to the style of the old book that it takes you some time to adjust to the new style. So for that, I would recommend going back to Cambridge One again, because if you go to um, the first part, I said my library. Now this section is called my training. If you go to my training, you will find uh, almost the same books or most of the same books with a video on how to teach that particular book. So you can get a lot of uh, insight and input from Cambridge on how to deal with the new book that you're buying. I think that is a great advantage. Sometimes when I look for a new book, before I decide to buy it, I go to my training just to make sure that the training for that book is there available. And I can watch the video and I can check the differences, the highlights of the new book and how to manage it. That's a very good idea. If the book, um, Okay, Jonathan, sometimes, uh, okay, it's much better than another book. Oh, great, Jonathan, that's great. We have to compliment. Uh, one thing that is important to remember, it's wonderful to have a book because it's a great tool. The book is not your master and the book is not perfect. There is no book which is perfect. Books are good. And then we always complement with extra activities. That's, that's perfect. It's a very good step. So as I was saying, I like to look at Cambridge One and see if I have the video training for the book, because this video training will give me insight on how to deal with the differences that I have to adjust to in, in my teaching. Sometimes if the book is not in my training section, you can get in contact with Cambridge and maybe they're going to find you a rep who will walk you through the book and tell you the, the different things. So it's always good to check on that to make sure that you are able to take a full advantage of the new tool that you are using in your lesson. Any questions before we move on? Ask now or ask later. 
Let's always ask our questions. Uh, okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So let's go into the last part. This is flying. This is great. Student management. So now we're going to set aside the teaching and get into administrating. As private teachers, we do not have a secretary behind us. We do not have a school behind us. We do not have a complete system behind us. We have to do everything. And sometimes we get lost. So let's try to focus on those questions. Think about how we manage all of that. And then we start sharing. So uh, once again, one minute, read the questions carefully and think about them. Okay, so there we go. How do you keep track of your private students? What do you do? Do you have a notebook that you write everything you do? Or do you have a file in the computer? Do you write it on the book? How do you do it? Oh, great, Tenata. You can record and revise. Okay, one file per student. That's great, Bianca. Okay. Okay, Marina, Maura, okay, 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 send in the, uh, uh, an attendance sheet, okay. You are very organized, organized teachers, congratulations, that's great. It's a pity I cannot see your faces, I'm so proud of this, of this uh, um, attendance, yeah. This audience is great, you are great. Oh, a spreadsheet, John. That's that's very professional. Okay, great, great. This is good. Andrea, too, a spreadsheet. Very nice, very nice. Okay, great. And the next question was, uh, um, I like the idea of spreadsheet, too, but I'm going to be honest with you. I lose them. Yeah, I, 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 I prepare lots of things and files and then suddenly I don't know where I save them anymore. And, and, and then uh, once I, I decided to, to have one folder for all the profiles and then I put everything together and then I couldn't find them in the middle of everything I had to do. And then I decided to separate again. I'm, a, I'm very disorganized as far as filing is concerned. I need to improve that. So let's take a look at the second question. Okay. Does everybody make notes on the student's lesson, um, lesson by lesson? Do you make notes on performance or do you leave it just for special moments? Okay. Marina is okay. Marina, all right. Okay, separate folders. Lesson by lesson, this is great. This is great. Oh, Google Docs, that's a very good uh, tool too. Perfect. Great, this is really great. So you're, you're in the right tracks, you're doing the right thing. It's a very good idea to keep track a lesson by lesson so that we never get lost. We always know. Um, once a student of mine, uh, once I, I told, uh, I usually do that. I look at my students and I say, okay, what do you remember from last lesson? Where did we stop? And once we had a student who said, I don't like that because I think you should do your job. You should know where we stop. Don't you keep track of the lessons? And then, and then uh, of course, I felt like telling the student, like this is, actually did tell the student, this is, this is a tool. I'm actually checking how much you remember from the lesson. I know where I stopped. I just made it casual in order to trigger your memory but I do keep track. I felt like ending the sentence with jerk, 
but I didn't. I, I held myself. Yeah, I just held myself. Yeah. But but uh, sometimes it's true. Sometimes you may forget to take notes and then you don't remember where you stopped and the students feel like we're not doing our jobs. So it's very important to keep track every single lesson. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, and the other question? Okay, development and needs. Do you have a separate file or do you have, in the case of spreadsheet, I think everything is there in different columns, but if you don't have a spreadsheet, do you have a separate file or a separate page to work on development and needs? The same spreadsheet, okay, very good. Oh, daily diary, oh, beautiful. Okay, very nice, very nice. Okay, great. So um, if everybody here got curious about the way uh, each other keeps track of their students' learning and progress, and you would like to have more ideas, or you, you would like to, to put them all together in one nice place, again, you can go back to Cambridge Org, the same site, a different tag. The tag now is called My Students, if I'm not mistaken. Just take a quick look. Yeah, my classes. Yeah, it's called the tag now is called my classes. When you're going to my classes, you are able to open a, a report file for every private student or for groups as well. And then the advantage of using Cambridge One is that you may organize the information and then it may be easy to email homework to everyone or, or, or back or, or to talk to everyone and, and you know, there are different and different ways. I'm, I'm sure that the files that you already use, the files that you have designed yourself are great, I'm sure. But if you would like to see a different way, if you'd like to see another option, go there and browse through um, um, My Classes and you will see all that My Classes are ready to, uh, is ready to uh, offer you in terms of tools and student management. If you do not have your own uh, spreadsheet yet, it's a great suggestion. Go there, experiment with it. Oh, I love Vilela. Oh, great. Yes, yes. So now you can go there and you can check it, Isla. Yeah, it's, it's a really good place. Great. Any more questions? No? Okay. So I think we're, we're getting to the end of this. Okay, yes. And this is it. So the idea here um, for this workshop supported by Cambridge and uh, by Cambridge by your site project, by your site for primary teachers is exactly that. Cambridge is there offering us help in order to deal with your private, with our private students, in order to manage our classes, uh, find material for our classes, find language support, find teaching support for our classes. As I said at the beginning of this presentation, if you click on Cambridge by your side at the top where it says click here, you will be redirected to a YouTube video. Don't watch it now, wait for the end of this presentation. And, and uh, it's a 30 minute video. It will give you insight on everything that by your side has to offer. There is even uh, an option of connecting by your side to Dizal and getting discounts at Dizal, not only for you, but also for your students. So watch, watch the video and, and uh, take a look and check the advantages of joining Cambridge by your side. Okay, so before we end, any other questions you'd like to ask? Yeah, this is my contact. I've been around for a while. I've recognized many of the names, but there were many which were new to me as well. So it was a great pleasure to meet you. It's a pity that we couldn't see each other face to face. You, could, you had to bear with my ugly face but I couldn't see your beautiful faces. Uh, oh, thank you, Sandra. That's so, that's so beautiful. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, everybody. Okay, and this is it. Um, Sergio from Cambridge is here with us. Sergio, would you like to make a, some last words about Cambridge and Cambridge by your side? Um, don't think you would. Okay, there he is. Hello there, okay. hello everyone. First of all, I'd like to thank you, Elsio, for the great webinar. You are not only a great teacher, but a, a great presenter. 
and everybody who had the opportunity to watch you knows that. Uh, I'd like to uh, also to thank Giselle for the delivery of this uh, webinar. Thank, thank you very much for your support. And I just wanted to say that uh, uh, the Cambridge Biosite uh, program is a free membership program uh, for uh, English private teachers uh, who has lots of benefits. Uh, you have the, uh, the links there to find out more about the program. And I uh, would like to, uh, to leave my email address as well. So in case you have any, any questions about it, you can write uh, a message to, uh, to me, okay? Thank you very, very much. Okay, are you going to leave your email in the chat? Yes, yes I that's think great. So. Okay, great. Okay. Yes. So Thank this you very is much. it. Thank you all and hope to see you around. Bye bye. Bye bye then.